Now to discuss this and much more, former Homeland Security Secretary Michael Chertoff, he now heads the Chertoff Group. Sir, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Good to be on, Jake. So nearly three weeks ago, the last time you were on CNN, you said that President-elect Trump's behavior since the election had reflected a sober, disciplined, and appropriate approach. You said you were encouraged. Since then, there have been developments. He's broken with protocol, taken that call from the president of Taiwan. He's talked about imposing big tariffs on products made in China. Um, this week, he's gone after a local labor leader who had criticized him. Do you still feel that he's been sober, disciplined, and appropriate, and you're encouraged? Well, let me say this. In, in terms of his appointments, by and large, I think particularly in the national security area, the uh, suggestion that General Mattis is going to be defense secretary and General Kelly, head of Homeland Security, I think are good appointments. Um, in terms of the, of the call to Taiwan, you know, there is an argument that sometimes giving a little bit of a brush back to the Chinese and indicating that we may shake things up a little is not a bad idea. Now, the question is, how do you execute on that? Uh, because it should be part of a strategy, and hopefully uh, he is in the process of developing with his advisors and with the experts a strategy going forward that doesn't antagonize the Chinese, but perhaps adjusts a little bit in terms of our relationship with them. What do you make of all the potential conflicts of interest? He's got this global business enterprise, uh, and it seems that he's not going to divest himself or sell off his assets, that he's going to try to do some sort of wall, but his sons, Don Jr. and Eric, will still be in charge of the company. And there are a lot of decisions and a lot of things having to do with foreign governments that a lot of people think, a lot of ethics experts say, this is going to be a problem for him. Well, one thing, Jake, is if we're talking about creating jobs, there are going to be a lot of jobs for lawyers. because Lawyers I suing the Trump suing organization? Or suing, defending, analyzing, advising. Um, I don't know what he's going to do. I mean, obviously, when you have business interests and financial stakes involving foreign countries, it raises a whole host of issues. So he's going to have to work with the lawyers to figure out what it protects him and protects the country and his kids from getting caught up in some kind of, uh, of a problem. Would you suggest that he fully divest or at least... Well, divestiture is the easiest thing to do, and that's clean and, and simple. I think when you don't do that, even though the strict ethics laws don't apply to the president, there are a lot of laws that do apply, including the Constitution, and he's going to have to get guidance as to what that requires. Let's talk about the fact that uh, we're being told by the tra transition team the president-elect Trump is getting about one intelligence briefing a week, uh, whereas, obviously, normally uh, presidents-elect and, and what we're told Vice President-elect Pence is getting one roughly every day. Um, does it matter? And, and if, it's, if so, uh, why? Well, you know, presidents have treated the, the presidential daily brief differently. I know President Bush got it every day or six days a week, and actually someone came in and briefed him. Other presidents have read it, but they haven't had somebody come in. Some people get briefed orally. Now, he's not president yet, so he's got a little bit of time to figure out what he wants to do. But I think what he'll find out is when you own the responsibility, there's such a lot of dynamic change every single day that in some form or another, you're going to want to hear every day what's going on, whether that's the written brief, whether it's something electronic, whether it's someone coming in giving an oral brief or some combination. He's going to have to figure out what he's comfortable with once he actually has the job. Uh, President Obama announced that he is ordering uh, a full intelligence review into the election, including uh, the hacking, allegedly, by Russia. How concerned are you uh, about the Russian um, interplay in, in the election this year? Well, I actually think it's even a, a more important, broader question, because for years the Russians have engaged in what they call information operations in Europe, and they've used it to influence public opinion, to drive certain candidates uh, forward with finance, with propaganda, by having uh, botnets that literally drive up certain tweets in order to get attention. So this is part of a larger set of issues. We've just begun to experience that here in the U.S., but I think in many ways what the Russians have done is weaponized uh, social media, and we need to have a larger analysis and discussion of what that means strategically for how we deal with the Russians around the globe. How do you think that they've weaponized social media? Just, but the hacking into... N not the, just hacking into yeah. data to get data, which is espionage, but literally using it to manipulate public opinion, to put stories out that are biased or phony in order to drive public opinion a certain way. If you look at polling in Europe, you'll be amazed to find that in many places, Attitudes to the U.S. and Russia are basically evenly balanced. People think that the U.S. is as much of a problem as Russia. That is driven by some of the information operations that for years have now been uh, pushed out in, in Western Europe. 
two former heads of the CIA, uh, men that I think you know well, uh, Michael Hayden and, and Mike Morrell, both have told me that they think Putin is playing Trump. Uh, Hayden even suggested he's a useful fool. Um, what do you think? I, I don't think there's any doubt in my mind that Putin is trying to set the stage in the circumstances to get Donald Trump to be as favorable to him as possible. Now, of course, other presidents had, quote, resets, and they rapidly discovered that the reset was only cosmetic and that there were the fundamental challenges were still there. So, look, I think it's okay to treat the Russians respectfully. I think there are times we've gratuitously insulted them, and that's probably unnecessary and unhelpful. But you've got to be very clear that other than being polite, there are certain core interests the U.S. and its allies have, and those can't be compromised. And I think that's going to be a critical test for the incoming administration. Do you think President-elect Trump realizes that? Well, I, this is what his advisors and people like General Mattis uh, and General Kelly, uh, they understand, they know about it, and they ought to be in the process of educating him about so it. So they get it. All right. Thank you so much, Secretary Chernoff. Always good to see you. Thank you so much.